Our next conversation is focused on changing the face and building a digital future that works for everyone. We're so thrilled to bring on Serpil and Matt and Annalee, who you'll see here in just a second. And for everyone just joining us, thank you and welcome to our last day at the Virtual Quality Lounge at CES. Shelly, you can uh, come on the camera now and I'm gonna hand it over to you to get started as we bring on the other speakers. Okay, good morning, Talia. And I think for this conversation, we are gonna have a very big group coming in from all parts of the world. So good afternoon and good evening for everyone. Hi, Serpil, how are you? You're on mute. And hi, Matt. And Annalie, I don't I see you yet. Matt. Hi, both of you. Welcome. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Perfect. Up oh, there's Annalie. Hi, Annalie. How are Hi, you? Hi. Hello. Hello. Good morning from the snowy Finland. In Finland. Okay. Yes. Very good. Matt, where are you coming in from? I am in London, formerly in Europe, but now <laughs> in the UK. Very good. Serpa, where are you coming in from? I was supposed to be in London, but I'm in my hometown, Istanbul, right now. Well, there you go. You know, I think that it's the perfect segue to this um, conversation, technology as an enabler, technology also as something that um, is a, a democratizer. It's a way of bringing all of us together from all parts of the world to have this really important conversation about technology. And th this conversation is called Change the Face. Very excited to hear all about that, building a digital future that works for everyone. So for everyone joining in in this conversation, also this is an interactive conversation. We love your input. We love your comments. We love your suggestions and we really love your questions and I will weave them all in if you ask them. So get going, get busy and uh, we're gonna get started. Okay, with that, let's each introduce ourselves. Serpil, if you can start, tell me who you are, what you do, and tell me what your definition of a digital future that works for everyone is. Like, what does that mean to you? Um, I am um, the CEO of the EU cluster at Vodafone Group. I'm also very privileged to be uh, steering uh, the diversity and inclusion committee uh, since 2013 globally at Vodafone. So obviously, personally, this is a very passionate topic for me. And also connecting everyone to a better future is the purpose uh, of our company. So this conversation is super important for us and very relevant for us. In the broadest sense, I would say that um, a building a, a digital future is about really creating an inclusive digital society through democratizing uh, the digital technologies and the opportunities it brings to everyone everywhere. And unfortunately, the recent events, the pandemic has shown us that uh, all the efforts we're making in terms of uh, e more equality of opportunities uh, are also going back. And uh, as we think about how do we build back the future in a more inclusive way, we're very conscious of the pivotal role the digital technologies plays uh, in, this, in, in terms of providing equal opportunities to everyone to progress their livelihoods, their businesses, and also the progress opportunities for the societies and economies. And therefore, we're very conscious that in the future digital transformation that has already started in a very fast pace, thanks to COVID in a way, uh, we, we need to make sure that nobody is left behind in that transformation. Perfect, thank you. You know, it's interesting when you talked about we have to build back. Um, one of the things that we talk a lot about is we need to create we have the opportunity now to create the um, equity, the equality that we want to see. We don't want to go back. We want to create forward. And a lot of the initiatives that we're going to hear about how you're all coming together to do that is, is going to drive that significant change. Um, Matt, tell us all about you. Well, firstly, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you, Shelley, for advising me. And, and uh, um, like 
my job at Google is to run operations in Africa, the Middle East and Europe. And I think a lot about technology working for everyone. Um, firstly, from the cultural standpoint, you know, we rely a lot on technology that's built in Silicon Valley and that has to work for people in South Africa, Finland, Italy, wherever. Secondly, technology that's built largely by men. Uh, Google, I think, was the first of the big companies to um, divulge our gender balance, which is, you know, frankly, appalling on the tech side of things. But we've made a bunch of progress from like 17 percent, I think, of women in tech when we first started reporting a few years ago to sort of more than 24. Mm -hmm. There's an awful lot more to do on gender in the people. Who direction build. forward. You know, we're a company whose mission is um, organize the world's information and make it accessible and useful for everyone. And that for everyone piece is so important. So there's cultural diversity, but there's also just the representation of the population in the people who build the product. So I always say if we want to build products that work for everyone, they need to be built by everyone. And the industry and business as a whole has got a lot of work to do there. And I also want to point out, you talked about 17% to 24%. That's progress. And, you know, we might not be at 50, but we are moving forward. And I think that as long as we continuously move forward with consciousness and intentionality, we are, you know, moving, you know, forward in the right direction. And we need to um, give ourselves credit for that, too. You know, oftentimes we're like, well, you only move 7%. That's a lot. And, you know, as long as we are always moving forward, then, you know, I'm very, um, very hopeful and very excited about, you know, the direction. So thank you for that. Hi, Annalie. Hi, Shelley. Good to be here. Great to have you here, especially from Finland. Excited. <laughs> yeah. Uh, along those lines, as Sir Bill and Matt were sharing, um, Nokia, Nokia's mission is to create the technology to connect the world. and. Uh, as, as Serpil said, no one can be left behind. Um, and this digital society, we, we, we take digital divide seriously. And I was just reading through some, uh, some uh, data. According to the ITU, 3 billion people are still offline. And uh, UNICEF estimated that one third of the world's school children were unable to access remote learning when COVID-19 started. So these are the issues uh, that um, Nokia uh, takes seriously and wants to provide solutions for. Um, and, and digital inclusion is, is part of Nokia's mission. Um, internally, uh, we really think about inclusion and diversity from a business angle. And it's, it's important that we, we bring in new people with new ideas. Um, uh, and diverse people, especially. So I'm head, head of inclusion and diversity at Nokia, and my name is Anneli, Anneli Kars. Fantastic, Anneli. So I, I want to get right to it because we've talked about, and you used really important phrases, Anneli, which was digital divide. And then you also, in the same sentence, used digital inclusion and how important that is. We need to move from the digital divide and the inequity of technology and technology access to digital inclusion. So Serpil, I wanna to come to you because what you have all done and you talk about the cluster, let's discuss the collective action of you know, what you are all doing around you know, bringing the technology sector together so that you can reflect the world that we operate in you know, in a whole new way and, and really create you know, the, the impact and the effect of diversity and inclusion. Can you just tell us you know, how this all came about and you know, what that, that, that is? Sure, I think... Uh... All of our companies in the technology sector are really working hard to, to, on diversity and inclusion topic. And we have many, many initiatives. Nevertheless, um, two years ago, we made a research uh, with 8,000 participants globally. And the respondents basically said that, as Matt also touched, that uh, if, if you were to describe technology as a person, they would predominantly describe it as um, young, white, uh, middle class, uh, and male. Uh, and this is pretty uh, factual also, because when you look at, for example, the EU Commission report lately, only 21% of the digital jobs are taken by women. 
And more importantly, um, the researchers in several countries uh, among women say that, you know, they are really not considering technology and digital as a career. Only 19% of the women in the UK uh, are saying that, you know, they would consider uh, a job in the tech and digital sector. So um, we really need to accelerate uh, our, our initiatives here. And although many of these reputable companies and uh, the two of them are with us today, are doing extreme hard work on this, it's going slow. So the idea we came up with last year was to, how can we accelerate in changing the face of tech by collaborating across companies and uh, basically sharing more of our best practices, learnings, experiences, so that we don't need to reinvent the wheel. And also in um, collaborating more in initiatives that are pretty similar. So instead of doing them in silos, if you like, can we come together to accelerate the impact through a more collective action? And that's basically changed the face. And uh, so we're very excited uh, to have uh, Google with us and uh, Nokia with us. And we have like 14 companies now that have really been shown interest. So we'll, we'll have more conversations around how can we synergize together. I, I just, you know, that just brings such a big smile to my face because we always say we're better together. It's what the female quotient is all about, bringing a bunch of companies to work together. You know, one of the reasons I think we've gone backwards historically is we're all doing the same thing separately. And we have a finite amount of resources. You know, if we could all come together to move forward, this is where competition you know, really does not exist. We are really working together, uniting so that we could advance diversity and inclusion, which is the whole purpose of it. So Matt, I wanna to go to you and talk about the power of the collective. What have you found um, from participating in this collective action, you know, from the Google perspective, has it helped you advance further? Have you learned more? Um, tell me the, the better together story from your perspective. Yeah, thank you, Shelley. I mean, I think uh, absolutely. Um, it's if you're in one of these companies where you know the engineers are trying to invent totally new things and and wow people with technology that looks like magic uh sometimes it's challenging to say well hang on we could probably learn from outside and not just invent everything ourselves and i think one of the key things for people like me on the sort of business and operation side has been to, to try to connect much more with the world because we learn a lot from companies like vodafone and others who've made some progress in their own organization so Firstly, that, that's a really important thing. Secondly, I think just to complement what Circle said, we've been trying to do stuff outside too. So one of the problems I think is a perception that technology for me, as you say, it's the kind of, it's the white guy, you know, it's not something that women will get into, or it's not something that's culturally appropriate in lots of countries to even think of as a career. And um, triggered by the EU about five or six years ago, they had a report that said millions of jobs are gonna go unfilled because of a lack of digital skills. And so we started off in Spain doing some partnership work with a couple of other companies. Could we train some people in digital skills with online learning and classroom learning? And it took off. We were blown away by demand. And now we've trained around the world 70 million people in digital skills. It's not like to be a coder, but more, how do I use a website? How can I do online marketing? Could I put this to work and actually build a career in it? And so I said, we've been blown away by demand. We've always done it in partnership. So whether it's Deutsche Post and PayPal in Germany, or whether it's the Chambers of Commerce and Small Business Federation in Italy, never on our own because we don't know all of the stuff, but um, blown away by demand. Second thing I say is um, it's almost 50-50 female male. So the people who we trained, um, as it's a specifically gender or youth targeted program, have, have been largely representative of the population, which suggests there is a desire and there is a will and there is a fit uh, for women in technology as well. So I'm, I'm really optimistic in the long term about that, even if our education system is struggling to move uh, that far. So always in partnership, learning and inspired from others. And I think the other thing I'd say, Shelley, is you know this pandemic, more than any other time, I think it's shown us how technology has leapt forward. It's been a lifeline to people in lockdown. It's going to be critical to come back. And therefore, I think governments and companies like ours and 
cult, you know, uh, community organizations and people need to work together in a way we've never done before if we want to recover faster and better. And so I'm kind of optimistic about that, given these conversations taking place and how clear it is that this technology does now need to work for everyone. The people who aren't connected, this and the people who are not represented in building it. Oh, fantastic. And, you know, one of the things when Serpil was describing the face of technology, if you ask, you know, uh, consumers, what does technology look like if it were a person and it's a white middle class male, you know, all I kept thinking about was technology used to be cold and, you know, you would think that it's just not very inviting and how do we make it warm and welcoming? You know, I just kept thinking of those adjectives. How do we make it warm and welcoming so that everybody wants to put a big, you know, hug around it and, and be able to, to feel comfortable with it and that it's not so scary, um, which I think is very interesting. And we're gonna come back to that because some questions are coming in already. Annalie, um, how has this partnership uh, been for you? It, it has been great, and I, I really echo what Matt and uh, Serpil has have just said. Um, perhaps building on on our need, uh, our sort of mission uh, and and belief that digital inclusion is bridged with everyone having high speed broadband access, and and especially bringing in and working with the young people to make sure in 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 underprivileged countries where children are still connect, unconnected in schools to make sure that we, we provide those accesses. And we are, we are working um, hard both in South Africa as well as in Kenya with, with a lot of schools um, to, to provide that access. And actually a collaboration was mentioned here as, as key for, for, for the um, progress and we work both with Vodafone Foundation as well as with Google on, on several uh, projects to, to uh, bring broadband connectivity to, to people in rural areas and, and make them connected. So I think um, also are the socio, changing the socioeconomic status of those people who are uh, privileged to high speed connectivity is important. Well, and it also brings up a whole conversation around digital trans transformation in the workplace of, you know, how do we really create a more inclusive or cultural belonging, a place that everyone feels comfortable, diverse and inclusive, you know, workplace environment. So Matt, you want to open up a conversation of, you know, your thoughts around, um, around that? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously we... The first step, as you pointed out, is to admit you've got a problem and publishing our numbers and committing to make a change for us has been a really important step. Um, and then also trying to understand better, and we're a data-driven company, so we do a massive internal survey every year trying to understand how people perceive being at the company, all kinds of aspects of getting things done, feeling included, making progress and so on. And that gives us really helpful data. And um, you know, one of the things we found is that the experience of the company is, is not the same across groups. And underrepresented groups typically, you know, there are things which are not so good for them as that as they are for the, the you know the majority. And so, you know, that applies in some areas to women, but particularly, I think, for uh, underrepresented racial ethnic groups. And you know, we've we've seen this year, hopefully, um, a, a movement that's including all of us in making uh, you know addressing racism something that we all spend time doing, recognizing we have to be active about that. So that's one of the things that's really exercised us is is really trying to understand what we can do to improve the culture for those kinds of groups. And you know, one of the challenges, obviously, just as we've seen over, over decades for women in business is where are the role models? Where are the people I can look at and go, actually, that I can see myself in that role. So that's one of the challenges. And we think about that, not just in the company, but also in our products, right? So if you search you know, for an image of an engineer on Google, right, what do you see? Well, actually, what you see now is a pretty representative sample of engineers in terms of gender and race, but in the past, you might not have seen that. So there's an obligation and responsibility there, I think, as well as internally, um, culturally. So there's an awful lot, I think, you know, to accept there's an awful lot of work to do. Making progress is helpful in galvanizing people. I think the final thing I'd say, you know, partly given my representation on this call, it's vital that the majority, you know, the, um, the privileged straight white men in the world step up and get engaged in the conversation and are not afraid to make a mistake and get it wrong and occasionally offend people because it's much worse to do nothing than, um, than you know, to, to try and use your voice in, in a 
positive way. So that's personally a journey for me that I've sometimes found difficult, but it's also, also been incredibly rewarding when you can see how just putting people in place and giving them the chance really changes things. You know, it's, it's really um, quite remarkable because all the work that Google is doing with um, Getty and Getty Images and, and truly changing the face. And so that's why I, I really am so hopeful with this collective action that you're all taking together of even talking about change the face. It's intentional. There are so many faces out there, so, so much diversity in the tech space. It's showcasing them. And as the co-founder of See Her, if you can see her, you could be her. If you change the face and start showing all these faces, representation equals reflection. Reflection creates the change. Change creates the impact that we all need to see. So I'm going to tie in one big question that you can each pull one part. When we talk about change the face, collective action, it's about the people we have in the business of technology. It's about the consumers that are, you know, buying the products, the goods and services. And we know that consumers today have purpose in their DNA and they expect this from companies that they're going to buy from today. And they will look it up and they will do their Google searches and they will, you know, see if companies are walking the talk, you know, consistently. So it's about internal workplace, it's about supply chain, it's about consumers, and it's also about product and product design. So in any of those areas, pick one that you want to talk about. I um, mean, Matt, you had the question about designing products. So I'm putting that in there and I'm giving you a little heads up to pick that 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 side of it. Um, if you could each pick one of those areas and talk about what um, you are doing in any of those areas to impact change, to walk the talk and to hold yourselves accountable. Um, Anna Lee, we'll start can, with you. Yeah, can you just repeat the areas? Sorry, I... So everything about diversity and changing the face of technology comes from the consumer perspective of how you engage with consumers in your media and in representation, you know, reflection of changing the face and the images that you use and the spokespeople that you have to your supply chain diversity in the supply chain, to um, making the technology more accessible, to internal work workplace right. transformation, any of the areas that are the ingredients and the steps towards changing the face of technology. Yeah. Let me pick that internal um, digital transformation, how we how we leverage that uh, in, in three different ways, basically in talent management, where we, we really curiously pilot different type of AI solutions at Nokia. Um, uh, of course, we are very aware of, of the uh, data that is that that is used that it can be very biased. However, um, I would say that I have just run a, a or unconscious bias with uh, with all company managers, over 7,000 managers. And I would say that unbiasing AI is almost easier than unbiasing people. So, <laughs> so uh, but there are three areas, as I said, so uh, promoting more inclusive ways of working, um, talent management, talent acquisition, and uh, which is quite obvious. I, I think we all are ex experimenting in that area, but then also equalizing the opportunities. Um, uh, in, in that inclusive ways of working, I think um, most of our women at Nokia, as well as across the world, are uh, caretakers. Either they are raising, raising their children or taking care of the elderly parents. And, and providing those digital tools to them that are reliable, that uh, allow them the flexibility, but also the predict predictability of their work is sort of um, diminishing the importance of physical space and, and mobility. Uh, and and uh, they can work from wherever. Also, uh, this is very helpful for people with disabilities at, at Nokia, they don't need to commute, they can work from where they are. And, and of course, the equal opportunities to learn upskill, uh, equal opportunities to apply to any jobs across the world and work where you are, uh, from where you are, uh, is, is important. Perhaps those things I would highlight. Thank you so much. And, you know, bias in, bias out. So it's it's another reason we need to change the face, uh, because if we don't have diversity in programming and working on technology, you know, on the other end, 
we will see uh, the bias come on the other side. Serpil, what about you? Kelly, you're asking me a very tough question to select because- Of course, because you want to answer all of them because you're working in all of them. <laughs> right, but I've been always an advocate that if you really want to make an impact on gender topic, it shouldn't be an HR project, it shouldn't be a commercial project, it should be everything. Therefore, the whole organization is galvanized around you know, thinking about inclus inclusiveness. Uh, and we, yeah, we call this the fourth four C down. approach. I just want to yeah. say for everyone listening in, top down, bottom up, and all around, it's everyone's Exactly. So we call it the four Cs, which is the customers, communities, colleagues, and the co-partners, the suppliers. And this is what we do in the diversity and inclusion steerco. It's a multifunctional team, you know, reviewing all of our initiatives. But anyway, if you want me to pick one, I'll pick the customers and the, which has an impact on the communities. So the idea we came up with back in actually 2014, when we saw that there was a gender gap of 23 percentage points in terms of internet access and 14 percentage points in terms of basic mobile phone ownership. We thought this was really core to our company strategy that we need to do something around it. So we came up with women segment propositions. These are obviously commercial propositions uh, only towards women. And, uh, and in emerging markets, we have said that we will connect 50 million unconnected women through that. And now I'm pleased to say that 20 million of that is done, but we still have time to go. But what we also do is in those propositions, we build certain apps that help women in their local needs. So mm -hmm. this could be a mom and care, mom and baby care app in Africa which is really working really well because they don't have access to health services uh, as in developed markets. And, uh, or I'm sorry to say, but it's a reality. We have launched a domestic violence app in many of our markets. It's a global initiative. Unfortunately, there's more demand to it during these days of the pandemic. And, uh, and it helps really, it's really an urgent emergency service for uh, some of, in some of them connecting to the police if needed, or their you know, support um, um, uh, uh, community. Uh, and another one is the digital skills. So we have, uh, we're offering digital skills, uh, learning exper uh, experiences, uh, as well as entrepreneurial skills in some of our markets. So the idea is a commercial proposition, but on top of it, some apps that really help women excel and uh, help close the divide in learning and tools and also support initiatives. Oh God, so far we have to regroup back with collective action because we're working with women in a hundred countries. And if we could target, you know, delivery of specific needs to advance you know, those women in those markets. So let's let's circle back on that. Matt, bring us home very quickly so I don't get in trouble for being overtime. Product design, how important that is for um, inclusivity and in technology. Yeah, well, I mean, I think Serpil and Annalie are sort of providing the infrastructure. We're trying to provide products that work for everyone and really help to scale to everyone. So the first piece is things like Android, massively lowering the cost of getting online through a device. Uh, but then there's also making sure that the products you're building are not sort of inherent biased and we're trying to work hard on AI and the revolution that's there, which is hugely empowering, but to make sure that there are principles about unbiasing, that's hard work as you may see. Uh, and, and I think the other, the, the other piece as you say is, is recognizing that you can use your supply chain uh, to make progress as well. And, and you know, Serpil and yeah. I, we work hard as partners and collaborators and competitors sometimes, and that helps. But, you know, for example, in our marketing, we try to make sure that the teams providing us from other companies with marketing services are diverse. But also, as we did, as we did that, what we started to see that, and diversity on screen in our ads and so on, we started to realize we were doing diversity, but with stereotypes. So I think some of the work UN Stereotype has done has been really helpful there to sort of say, let's actually show a different vision of the world through what we do. So it's so multi-level, um, but really important to, I think the first step is like being aware of that and the responsibilities that we all have with the scale that this technology can now reach.
So well, you know, lots as of work as... to do. The conversation is so important. I'm grateful to you for, for bringing us together and allowing us in to, to learn from each other. Uh, listen, it, 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 we always say we're better together. That is very clear. When we talked about what does technology look like if it's a person, white, male, middle class, um, middle management, we know you guys are going to change the face. All I kept thinking about was what does a heart look like? And it looks like each of you. And I just want you to know that I, we are so appreciative for you bringing the industry together to work together to advance women, advance equality, advance diversity, advance inclusion across the entire ecosystem uh, for change. We can change the face together. We will change the face together. Thank you to each of you and all that you do. Big heart. Thank you. Thank you.